Hi friends. Lighting situation is not ideal. I hope you forgive me. It was bright, now it's cloudy, about to rain. I have my glam core on. Well, you know what? That's just how life is. All that to say, I wanted to go over my makeup travel bag, both makeup and brushes, not skincare. That can be another video as I do have another bag for skincare. I thought, why not go over the logic and reasoning behind why I choose the products and brushes that I do when I'm off. And when I mean travel, I mean going to Bay's house or Maddie's house. Will I like to go somewhere else? Absolutely. As much as I love Bay and Maddie, I'm manifesting friends. But when that time comes, I'll be prepared. And hopefully, so will you. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia, an online coach who specializes in flexibility and body weight training and overall trying to transform our habits so we can be sustainable in our wellness practices. But I also love to talk about the beauty, okay? And if you found my face and clicked on it, well, thank you so much. This is my current travel makeup bag of choice. It is the Away makeup bag, totally utterly too expensive, but I am an Away fan. Ever since I encountered their luggage for the first time on Instagram, I was hooked. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five Away luggages. Three out of the five are limited edition, and one of those things that I just had to get because once it's gone, it's gone. That's it. And as of late, I've quite enjoyed using the Away makeup bag to pack my makeup and brushes and to briefly cover the design. I also spoke about this bag, I think, in one of my favorite videos previously. You have the main compartment, which is zippered plastic, and then you have the brush sleeve that you can actually detach. It has these tabs here and you have the brushes like so. You also have an elastic band so you can hold it up as, you know, like a, what is this called, Bob Ross? I'm sorry. And I enjoy having a limited amount of space because that forces me to not bring all the brushes because I will be that person. I already insist on bringing all the makeup and we can have both friends. And that's why I appreciate the size of this brush holder. You have some like smaller holders and slight bigger. And I'll go over the brushes that I have here which is my current selection for travel. And the main compartment, not only does it have the zippered part, but it also has another like pouch that's attached to the bag underneath and where I put the mascara, the pencils, the smaller items that could get lost amongst the compacts that you see here. And I also bring along one of my Hakuhoro brush towels that you see is dirty so i have to wash this but great to travel along just so you can take off excess makeup and i like to place this between the brush and the main compartment so the brushes don't get too riled up let's go over what i bring along for travel i prefer a synthetic brush for foundation simply because it could get beat up a little bit more i could wash it more often without the brush being damaged or lessening quality because a natural hair brush that has a high quality bristle not recommended that you wash it often right and with the synthetic brush specifically the musical brush and all brush numbers and names will be down below linked i am an affiliate with fude beauty just so you know don't have to use the link but the names will be there if you just want to search for them separately and not use my link just want to let you know round soft multi-purpose and the size optimal for multitasking whether i want to apply foundation or a cream bronzer or blush. I even use this sometimes under the eyes because yes, it's a little big for under the eyes, but it's a perfect size just to buff away the concealer quickly. But because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, I do bring along a smaller concealer brush. And this is the newly released Sydney Grace synthetic brushes. They released both a face set and eye set. I'll have that link down below as well. Thank you to Sydney Grace for sending over the brushes, a synthetic brush also. And I like the longer bristle on here there's a little more flexibility on the blend and I think a perfect shape for under the eyes so if you're not too keen on using a bigger brush for under eye concealer blending then you can use the smaller brush which not only great for under the eyes but if you like a little more detailing work down the nose you could whip across concealer or an eye primer along the lids or even more detailing work here along the hollows of the cheek so two synthetic brushes for my complexion tasks again because you can wash them more often then they, you could get a little more rough with them. My two smaller cheek brushes, well, let me bring out 
all the cheek brushes. I have two Sonji brushes. This is the Lotus cheek brush. It is an angled brush, very fluffy, not too packed. And I like this size because it has great splay and fantastic with a lot of blush textures, very multi-use and multitasking in that way. You could even use it here for some highlight because again, the smaller brush head, I think just a little more multifaceted in terms of the areas you can use on your face. And then of course, through the hollows of the cheeks, perfect for that. I still have a smaller brush for under the eyes. Now this is a Surat eyeshadow brush, but you can see great for under the eyes here. The pointed tip and the squirreled hair blend just makes it phenomenal for setting your concealer. Also just painting along the nose, but because it is an eyeshadow brush and you're not one to use or have elaborate eye looks anyway. You can whip across a matte shadow or even a satin one across the lid, take it delicately here under the lash line and be done. So I like brushes generally when traveling that are multitasking in nature where the brush head size is moderate, where you can use the brush again with different products, different mediums, and not necessarily having to reach for a brush for this, a brush for that because you really don't want to overload. At least I don't want to the brush packing, right? I want to maybe bring more clothes or more this or more that. To have a whole other pouch dedicated to brushes when if I just kind of zero in on what I want to complete and want to do, I can edit and it be a lot more practical and efficient. And lastly, we have the classic Sonya G Sky cheek set. Specifically, this is the soft cheek brush, longer than the Lotus cheek. And what I like to use this for, bronzing purposes, also loose powder if I bring one along. Not only that, but blush obviously, and just like a final whip around just again to buff your products if you like to do that if you have your favorite finishing powder maybe to cut along the cheekbones here for a highlight so yes i went a little overboard with the cheek brushes but i like to have two on standby with not only different brush head sizes but different brush lengths and design all together, right? That makes it a little more versatile in terms of what I can use the brushes for. The eyes, the eyes, this was tough. This was tough. I am guilty of creating elaborate eye looks, albeit not as elaborate as other artists here on the space, but I can get into, you know, more than four or five shadows at a time. But when traveling, you know, I have to change my psychology a little bit. Like, listen, you're not filming YouTube. You're, you might not even put makeup on at all or very little. So do you really need all the eye brushes? I have four and I think they cover the most important tasks required for an eye look, I think. Classic blender brush. This is the Refer 27, which I adore for its slightly flat dome shape. Very fluffy here. It moves quickly and along the crease easily, and it just has that beautiful blown out blend when I'm placing a matte or another textured shadow along the crease. Really nice if you want to take shadow under the lash line, but a little, little like hazy, you know, milk cosmetic style. Next, we have the Lotus Worker, or you can have any dense shader, I think great, not only to pick up product for lid application, but also if you wanted to place a little more product here on the outer corner for intensity, pull it along the crease, take it along the lower lash line. And because this is more of a shader shape, it's going to be a little more precise with that shadow application as opposed to the blender for lower lash line coloring in case you need to keep it more precise. I also have my Cure though, which my apologies again, don't have the exact number, but this is a squirrel brush. It's a dome brush, very flexible, but still enough density to pick up good coloring. For my favorite task is to place that color on the outer lid. And because it's so soft, it has more of an airbrushed effect. So if you run into the issue of a darker color appearing too muddy, or it just looks uneven on the outer corners, I think a smaller squirrel brush is great for outer lid application, which I think is just lighter in terms of blend and blur. Also fantastic for the outer lower lash line or taking it all the way through. You can pull some color through the crease. And dare I say, if you wanted to go minimal, 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 any type of a squirrel or goat hair brush, I would say maybe on the softer side, you could just bring along for the ride and it be your solo brush. Yes, it's dome, but it's so silky that you can place color here along the lid 
through the crease, outer corner, fluff it out, lower lash line, and you're done. You're done. And lastly, have to bring along some sort of a pencil brush. Again, this is Refer, the number three, one of the original releases. And I primarily use this for inner corner highlights, as you could probably assume. Precise lower lash line application and my most important task that I like and will cover when going over the makeup is to blend out liner along the lashes. I like that smoky lash look with liner and to have a brush with a flexible tip just makes it so easy to achieve that without the skin moving and having a smoother finish overall. So those are my brushes that I like to take along and approach this as not necessarily, although yes, I mentioned the brand and whatnot, more like archetypes I think is important to consider when figuring out what type of brush you're bringing. I think also considering your skin type, your makeup, makeup style, what type of makeup you're bringing along will, will dictate what type of brushes you'll bring along. And that brings us now to the makeup. A few things before we roll into the makeup, um, and I'm sure you haven't noticed timestamps are down below if you just don't care about this part. You could pick and click, there you go. Consider where you're going. The internet is great in providing those predictions. Yes, weather can be unpredictable, but if you have the weather app, you could see what it looks like perhaps at least a week in advance. Humidity, uh, temperature, the, the climate conditions, I'm sure will let you know what makeup is appropriate or not. As well as I mentioned with the brushes, your skin conditions. If you have dry skin and are going somewhere dry-ish in climate, might not be a good idea to bring along like a no shine type of a primer, right? Perhaps we'll choose products that are more emollient, that have a little more glow, a little more luminosity to them. If you're somewhere in the middle, you know, either aura will work. If you're going somewhere humid, well, blotting powder, products that have a matte finish, at most a soft, Matte one, cheek products, powder versus cream. Again, depending on where you're at, if you're somewhere super hot and humid and you have oily skin, the cream products will probably melt off and not last as long. So on this trip, you might have to bring more powder products, right? Maybe you bring a palette that has both bronzer, blush, and highlights, so you don't have to put three compacts for each product. Although that's what I usually do because that's, that's just what happens sometimes. But with that said, the product that has found itself often in my travel bag is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. This is in shade number six. Six. And you know what? Why don't I just put everything on while I talk about it? And that means you gotta come in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. Using my Mizuho brush with the balm powder and something I just look, I'm all, I'm like practically hitting pan. Something I just like is the quick nature of this product. I whip it around fast, it gives my skin color, evens out the skin tone. And again, considering your climate conditions, great for humid types of, of situations. I'm not sure if you're a drier skin type, let me know if this worked, if you're oily or whatnot. And also let us know what your favorite travel products are and for, and for why, you know? We gotta share down below, fam. I find realistically when going on a trip, you want to do all the things and your getting ready time might just be shorter. Or you just wanna like, I don't know, hang out a little more, maybe not wanna spend so much time applying makeup. So generally, I choose products that are just fast in terms of the application. And yes, I'm looking through the lens of vacation, right? I love Maddie, not always feeling like a vacation, especially when she wants to wake up at four. Okay, when going on vacation, I feel you want to do, you know, more fun stuff than you would otherwise do if at home, maybe you're not going to have all the time in the world to apply makeup because who cares, right? That's what I've been using recently, mostly. Sometimes I like to bring along the NARS foundation, the light reflecting, because if you are going somewhere fun on your trip, an event, conference, party, you want a little more coverage, just a little more refined in the finish, then yes, I would recommend that you bring that foundation, whatever that foundation is for you in your vanity that serves that purpose, 
bring it along. Another choice is also the Rose Ink Skin Tint or any type of skin tint a product that's going to give you basically what the blurring balm does for me provide that evening of skin tone getting the complexion together this is more of a soft matte finish if you want something more radiant and luminous in finish this will be an appropriate match i don't like tinted moisturizers with spf uh, i rather just apply a separate spf or wear my sun hat the amount of spf you would have to apply in intent in tinted moisturizer form would just be too much makeup right because people apply tinted moisturizers just enough to uh, even out skin tone cover or not covered let's say but blur the blemishes that's not enough spf spf alone is like half a teaspoon worth and applying half a teaspoon worth of tinted moisturizer even half a teaspoon worth of regular moisturizer too much too much so i would recommend that you just apply spf and yes it can be a little complicated when applying makeup on top of spf because the matter with which you do can disrupt the coverage of your spf and have it uneven sun rays will go through disaster that's why i just wear a sun hat because it's it's just too much to deal with okay or try to be in the shade as much as you can if you burn easily or just forego the makeup you could use a sponge it's not going to be as aggressive as you saw when applying my blurring balm with my mizoho brush but i don't like sponges so that's why i choose the options that i just presented there you go next product concealer you know what i would say concealer can cover all your complexion needs technically if you want to bring one shade for your under eyes and another for all over your face for instance the dior forever correct or correct forgot the exact name is a great concealer for all over purposes it has a beautiful fluid texture that has moderate coverage it doesn't appear like a concealer when you swirl it and twirl it on your face i think fantastic to even out skin tone and whatnot and you can choose another color for under the eyes or maybe just use the same color all around because the brightening under eye thing i think is like we're done we're done with that depending on how dry your under eye skin gets you might powder or not nah. some people forgo powdering they're like who cares if it starts to crease i just do this if you like to bring along a powder a great one is the pat mcgrath blurring eye powder however caveat it's very delicate because it's like air whipped and baked if it gets knocked around too much in your bag it could crack. That's why I've been bringing along the Linda blotting powder. It's a bigger compact and it takes up more space, but because of the makeup security, I deal with it. If you can manage packing the Pat McGrath under eye blurring powder in a way that will ensure it's uh, it not breaking, then why not? I, I used to travel with that powder all the time, but then I got the Linda, fell in love with the Linda. I, I can go either way, but this just won't break or have the risk of breaking like the Pat McGrath powder does. <laughs> and press powder all the way, I wouldn't bring along a loose powder, you know, it's, I think generally those compacts are bigger than press powder ones. Another good one is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush. Airbrush flawless finishing, something something. Not too big, not too small, can be used both under eye and all over. And like you see here, lightly dusting under the eyes, along the brows, because I like a drier surface for my eyebrow pencil to work with, which introduces us what a great segue into my brow product i like the benefit goof proof this is in 3.5 you could also use one of those uh brushes that have a little bit of color on them great for like that quick fluffy brow which i think very much appropriate for vacation right not really concerned with shaping the brow unless again you have an event to attend a pate but even like the tropical warm parties i feel don't need the crazy structured brow but why not you can still have a pencil nearby it doesn't have to be your typical super structured brow right i just make sure i put a little more arch there and i'm done yeah you could then go in with a brow gel to ensure the hair stay in place or maybe if you want to microblade which i have done i actually have to go in and get them filled 
But even better, if you have microbladed brows, you could just use some sort of a gel to kind of prop your hairs up so they could look fluffy and spiky, or you know, however you however you want them to appear like. And having the spoolie on hand then brushes the pencil through if you are using a pencil. So yeah, we got a little filled up. So they look together. They don't look crazy like they did at the beginning of this video. So whatever brow product it is, I wouldn't bring like five brow products, right? Again, a little more low key. I just like the one pencil because I can dial the intensity of brownness, right? I could just whip it through sketch like as you just saw or go super in with like the carving out and all that stuff. But all tasks, I can cover it with the goof proof. Now this is it. We got to decide, okay, do you want to bring contour, bronzer, blush, highlight, cream highlight, cream blush. Again, depending on the climate conditions, if you're going somewhere dry and cold, maybe cream products will be better if you're going somewhere tropical hot humid powder products will be great although i would argue that a lot of cream products nowadays are technically advanced in terms of they don't break down as easily as emollient products that have been presented in the industry before i like multitasking products so i recently purchased the bare minerals blonzer when i first saw this product on sephora i was like that is up my alley. I purchased the shade Kiss of Rose, which I think, again, this has a little bit of the rose, a little bit of that terracotta hue of things, but it also has some sheen. And just look how smooth that is on the blend. Not only will you get blush, you got a little bit of shaping because of the color, you also get a little bit of sheen. So this is what I like to use either the Lotus Cheek with or even my soft cheek. I get some color here on the brush and I first whip it through the hollows, right? Because again, this color is perfect. And then I'll bring it around my cheeks and the leftover will then graze my cheekbone and just have enough color there. You could even just place this on the apples of the cheeks if you want more of that flushed out effect. But again, I think you can dial the color up or down depending on the intensity, whether you wanna bring it more on the hollows, more on the apples of the cheeks, more on the forehead. And that already just brings my complexion to life. It gives it color, it gives it great flush and the color itself, the rose tone, I think great for any occasion, whether you wanna be a little more casual, if you really wanna bump up the glam. In this case, I wouldn't necessarily bring a bronzer because again, the whole point of bringing a, a product like the Bare Minerals Blonzer is that it kills two with one, right? So you got that one product, However, if I needed to choose, I will definitely bring blush over bronzer and just leave the bronzer at home. I will even leave a stick at home. Yes, I didn't get the LYS bronzer stick. I was late, it sold out, both on Sephora and the LYS website. I don't know when I'm gonna get the hands on that product, but if it's something that small, sure, you can bring it along. However, I would bring along a cream blush instead. So I have the Rose Ink cream blush here. This is Fox Glove, which I failed to include in my terracotta video. So great opportunity to say yes, this is one of my picks for terracotta shade. And another reason why, again, I like to have my synthetic brush of a medium size is that I just think it's perfect to apply this product with or any cream product. It's just enough. The brush is big enough to place the product on my cheeks quickly. I love how it goes with the bronzer. It's in and around the same color, but it adds that little extra bit of flush on the center of my face. And to your recommendations, I did pick up the e.l.f. Putty blush. This is in the shade, ah, uh, is it Bali, I think? Yes. This is a great shade. This is a little more terracotta than the rose ink. Very soft, easy to apply, one and done, small, doesn't take up much room, is smaller than the rose ink. Again, if you needed to bring either blush or bronzer, always go with blush. That is just my personal opinion. If you want to, again, bring life to the complexion, a little bit of radiance, glow, dimension, bronzer can do that. It can. I think it stays more on the sculpting part of the spectrum. It offers structure, a little more shading, and depending on the bronzer hue and the undertone, you can bring it a little lower, just a little bit, so it doesn't appear muddy, but I feel blushes, depending on the color, 
can serve both sculpting and flush purposes more so than bronzer you know what i'm saying so definitely go with the blush now highlight if you're naturally oily you might just have highlight happening right now if you have a blush that has a little bit of sheen you can bring it up a little higher on the cheekbones and just have that sheen carry over or you can bring along a highlighter this is where i feel sticks are practical where you don't want to pack another compact you can just dab it on your fingers quick ready to go any type of balm maybe that doesn't necessarily have a color or a shimmer to it but just has that glassy look to the skin as of late i have been carrying along my phyto surgeons this is in the dew of dawn shade the spectral shine the official product name and yes i just purchased their new blush shades three out of the four three out of the four I didn't go too crazy. The reason I've been using this is because here in NYC, it is summertime, hot, hot, hot. And I adore this formula that is a dry cream. Not only will it take care of excess oil and shine, but because it is still a highlighter, it's gonna leave behind that radiance and glow, really luminous in finish, easy to apply. Again, using the same brush that I used with my Danessa, with my cream blush, yeah. I just think that's a beautiful effect on the skin. If you needed to, you could use your fingers and Final Surgeons reformulated this so you can use this with either fingers or brush if you prefer. You could use a more traditional powder for sure. I just, again, love how this product melts in with anything else. No matter what product I use, it just works beautifully well with with cream blush, powder blush, whatever, whatever. Oh, see, I had the NARS on standby. Had the NARS on standby, again, for the, the special events, the snatched face. Eyeshadow. This is where you gotta decide, okay, will I be really putting on eyeshadow like that on my trip? You could, you could. And I would immediately go to Viseart. These are the most practically designed eyeshadow palettes for travel, I think, you will ever encounter. This is the edit size, the Octandu size. Here you see the size comparisons. Octandu is the bigger version of the edit layout. They both have 12 shadows, but as you see, edit will be a lot smaller in terms of the shadow pans, which I think Listen, unless you're doing someone else's makeup, if you're just doing your own, you don't really need the Octandu size unless the palette has a color story that you need on your trip. I would just choose the edit. And the reason why I'll go with Viseart is it's reliable. It's reliable. You got the mattes, you got the satins, you got the sparklies, you got the metallics, you got the shimmers. You have so much in here. 12 shades. This is Rose, one of my most favorite curations from the Viseart edit line. Listen. There are so many daily looks in here, one and done. I'll show you. I'm not even gonna put on primer, okay? Because this is real. You go, you only got 15 minutes, okay? Let's go in with this coral shade first. I'm gonna whip that quickly through the crease. Another reason why I love this refer brush is because it splays out, doesn't have a lot of bristles like the 16 does, and I feel the fluff movement, it's just quick. Then we could go in with either this shade or the magenta shade, we're gonna pop that on the outer corner, why not? Just for a little bit more shading if you want, or you could just pop in the pink. The thing with Viseart mattes is that when you layer them, you just create a new color. You don't necessarily find muddying up, which listen, when you're in a jam, you don't have time to worry about the blend, okay? You gotta get these shadows on your eyes in a way that will look smooth, professional, and done. Just placing a little more of that peach shade here near the brow, okay? We could go in with one of these metallics here. Why not? Let's go in with this shade. And yes, I could use my Lotus Worker. Why not? So you can see how quick that is with the finger. If you wanna use the brush, you take Lotus Worker, tap that shade all over the lid and because Viseart metallics are just so lightweight and sparkly they're air whipped it's a great texture to work quickly with you could go in with any of these shades 
on the inner part of the eye. And for that task, I'm using my refer number three. Again, because of its small size, I think an appropriate way and moment to get this color on the inner. I'm actually going in with the lighter. This is a great color to have on the inner part of the eye. Why not? I'm actually bringing it closer to the first shade we applied on the majority of the lid and trailing that peachy color on the inner lower part of the lash line and just bringing more of that pink across lower part here. Burp, burp, burp. Now here's the thing. If you want a little more definition, if you have maybe five more minutes, pencil, 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 Pat McGrath's Permagel Liner, black coffee. It goes with anything. If you want something more intense, then yes, go with the black shade. But black coffee will never fail you in terms of delivering that definition, a little bit of intensity on the lash line. And because it's a Vizier palette, it will always have some sort of deep shade, which I do think the one found in the Rose Edit is a little more versatile than some. There's some deep brows in here that, mm, not as deep as it can go, but I love to use an eyeshadow to just help smooth out black coffee. And as I explained before, reference number three is one of my most favorite pencil brushes to work with black coffee or any pencil for that matter, because again, it's just smooth in terms of the tip's flexibility. The bristle length allows for that easy application and flow. And because it comes to a tip, when you do apply shadow on the brush, the shadow doesn't spread out far. It's very precise in the approach and the design and why I find it's just extremely easy to use for liner purposes. It's just incredibly simple to get a little more intensity across the lash line but again, because black coffee is not too warm, I feel it just pairs so well with a lot of color stories where even if the color story itself is on the warmer side, because black coffee is more neutral, it will just weave in well. All right, we got a little more definition. See what I'm saying? I love Rosetta, I gotta use this more often. Mascara. Definitely have to bring along an eyelash color. For me, I need the lashes to be curled. Even if I'm not wearing mascara, I find a nice curling with brows, cream blush, if you just wanna pop some on with your fingers and not even use a brush. Best way to go to just, you know, spring up the face. I do bring two mascaras. I know that's overkill because they're mascaras, they don't take but bees. I have to combine my Kill Lash Super Proof and Esum the mascara products. These ha they these two right here, right here, have been my holy grail combination. Before it was the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara with the Kill Lash. This duo just, I don't know what it is. The, the Esum brings like this spideriness to it, but the Kill Lash brings the curl and together, perfect. If I were to bring just one, it would be Kill Lash because when they, when it says super proof, it's super proof. Make sure you bring your eye makeup remover along for the ride if you do have this mascara on the trip. And again, the curl power for this formula, unparalleled. I ordered five. They're in my bag for backup because I'm convinced this is one of the best mascaras on the market for curling, longevity, for lengthening as well. And I think it has the perfect amount of mascara for those days where you just want to apply mascara with no eyeshadow. And that could be a little complicated, right? Because if the mascara is too intense and there's no eyeshadow, it's like that look can work, but not on me. I just don't like how it appears on me. So as you saw, I applied the Kill Lash and yes, we're going to the party on the trip. This is what's happening. I then take the Esum, give myself bedroom eyes. So I keep it closed in order for the spoolie to start at the root and then the rest will go up. But because the Kill Lash supplies this incredible curl and just upness, the Isa will bring more volume and splay to the lashes. It just has where I'll get like more of a fanned out look. Oh God, 
casualties, casualties, which I think appropriate if the eyeshadow look uh, is a little more intense. If you want more fluff and huh, from the lashes, then I do feel sometimes you just gotta apply to, you know, is because you want too many things and not fair to expect all the things from one mascara, okay? Get on the inner part, you know? Again, it's all about the bedroom eye look. See what I'm saying? Look at those lashes. Lipstick. I have to say, I'm not so much of a lipstick person as I am like a gloss person. So I do have the House Labs lip oil in my fanny pack, my everyday fanny pack that I just have in there for emergencies. The LYS lip, I it's the lip class or the lip oil gloss. That's a great product. I have that in the fanny as well. What I do currently have in the bag. Oh, my apologies. Sometimes, sometimes I bring along the Rare Beauty bronzer. If I have the LYS, I will bring that or this over a powder compact. This takes up more space than this. If you're tight on space, choose a stick. Anyway, what was I talking about? Lipstick. I do have Pat Structure lip liner somewhere because if I just need a quick nude moment, not only is it great for defining lips, but filling them in, I just have been using the Suku lip gloss. This, as you see, has a lot of pearl reflex in here. It's just a fantastic, good, all around lip gloss to apply. Now, I would suggest if you plan out makeup looks and you're like, listen, I need a red lip, pack it, right? I need the coral lip or the pink nude lip, whatever it is for you. Make sure you have it in the bag. I just find the Suku, no matter what cheek or eye product I have on, having a glossy, sparkly lip just goes with anything. And I feel it's easy. You can pack it up to go. Again, depending on the circumstances, if it's if the commitment is not there, you don't have a party to go to, or even if you do, this will work well. But just to be out and about, even on the beach, if you want the glossy lip, just bring the lip gloss. I feel people will be less inclined to wear like an actual lipstick. You know what I mean? But this has just been my go-to. In addition to the other color found in the collection, the more brown tone one, that's also gorgeous. It's lost somewhere just in the mountain of makeup I, I purchased in the last few months. But either this or that, it's in the bag. So that is it fam, what I have in my travel makeup bag, brushes and makeup. And again, like I mentioned about the brushes, these are types of products that I feel are useful or handy to have while traveling. And I always have to tell myself, listen, you don't have to bring all the things. I definitely get into the what if mode. What if this, what if that? What if I'm not on my glamist? Who cares? Listen, when you have these products, you can definitely glam it up as much as you like. That's why I like to have a pencil because you can definitely smoke it up. Sure, it might be not smoothie smooth for you to spread, but at least you can get a little more definition and smoke using the pencil. And again, if you do decide to bring along an eyeshadow palette, you could definitely glam it up as much as you like. And that is it, fam. Let me know what your favorite brush makeup products are for travel down below. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. What's in my makeup bag video or monthly faves. Take care and I will see you again soon.